the 49ers. So there is some, a little bit of similarities. I'm looking at keeping the faith on, on YouTube. He's like, Bonte, change the subject. I'm trying not to be angry on a Friday. I understand. Trust me, we're going to turn this thing up in a second. So you guys heard me yesterday. You guys think I'm wolfing, but very excited about the 49ers in 2024 with this offense. But I'm, I'm starting to feel it, too. I mean, once Brandon and I, Trent Williams get back out there, that'll obviously be the next level. But even right now, I know it was a, it was a rough early part of the week for Brock Purdy. Personally, I don't like to get uh, too wrapped up on early training camp stuff. I like to see yep. some games actually get played. Um, you know, some preseason games actually get played before I really start, you know, paying attention to some of these results. I kind of look into it. It's a lot similar to like spring training in baseball. The first couple weeks, it's more about just, just get your bearings. Mm-hmm. You know, let's get things back, get back in the groove of things. Um, and then once you start, you know, once the games start up next week when they're in Tennessee uh, for that first preseason game, then it's like, all right, Let's start rolling. Let's start seeing how these guys look. Hopefully, they run the ball enough in, in that yeah. first preseason game. <laughs> I, I can't, remember. No, I can't believe that was a talking point last oh, year. Oh, last year, we, we had jumped the shark. They didn't run the ball enough. Oh, they set Trey Lance up for failure. No, Trey Lance just wasn't good enough. Just wasn't good enough. Um, <laughs> for a late This is the ghost of Trey Lance. <laughs> Pate going to make me drink early today. No, 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 no. Feeling loose we're, Friday. But we're feeling very loose. It is not International Beer Day, so. It's International Beer Day? Ah, I got, I'm working on my gut here, Lemon. I got to be cool off that. Um, Get a light beer. Uh, Brandon now, you, for some reason, there was a lot of rumors yesterday, and I have no idea why. Joe, Sam, I I, I don't even know. Like, and when I say Joe, Joe Hawks, we got so many Joes around here now. Joe Hawks, it's my guy. Look, I, 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 I I don't know where the rumors came from that Brandon Ayuk was going to sign because of a handshake and a hug, and all of a sudden everybody just hyper focused. Oh, look at the handshake with Shanahan. Head. Oh, look at the hug. Oh, yeah, something's going to happen. A lot of He's body language treated. experts. Yeah, on body Twitter language. Yesterday. Read all body language about multi million dollar deals. So I sat back thinking, okay, maybe, just maybe, Ayuk is going to sign. We told Love and I were talking. I was like, all right, let's be prepared for that. Maybe it breaks during the show. But we had Matt Burrows on from The Athletic yesterday. He's been covering the 49ers for a long, long time. But we asked him, what is the latest with Brendan Ayuk? Here's what Matty B had to say. It's still kind of going back and forth, and I don't know if any ground has been gained. But I will say that the body language is good. I mean, the the narrative out there nationally is that, oh, Brandon Ayuk is so upset, and he wants to get traded to the commanders. He wants to get traded to, uh, you know, this team and that team. But, when you see him out there, he is um, enjoying himself. I mean, uh, early in training camp, he watched half of a practice next to John Lynch. John Lynch sits in center field like a safety does and watches the practice from that vantage point. He had Brandon Ayuk next to him for you know a good uh, 45 minutes during uh, a few sessions. So I don't know what the hell is going on. Matty B with more on Brandon Ayuk and what he's doing at the 49ers facility. He is doing team meetings. He's doing everything but the practices. So he's been part of this team. And I think that that's only, you know, encouraging, uh, I think, for, for ultimately getting this done. When that happens, I still don't know. The 49ers don't, don't know. Brandon Ayuk doesn't know. But the point is that he's here and he seems to be enjoying himself. So he's doing everything but practicing. And you got to remember, as Matty B said yesterday, and Shask and I have been on this too, Brandon Ike has been one of the best players in training camp the last two years. <laughs> last, just, mm-hmm. just dominant. One-on-ones, team drills. Nobody can guard this guy. So we're missing out on him, Diameter, Lenore, and Traverius Ward going at it in practice. He has been one of those guys. And then you look at the receiver market because Michael Silver wrote something very interesting the other day from the SF Chronicle. And we'll get into that in just a second. The May, you know, May, the 49ers may have to rethink how they do business here in the future. But you look at the receiver market, because I wanted to get paid shortly after the Super Bowl. It's like, mm-hmm. let's get this done. Let's make it happen. I want to be here. I want to get my back. Urgency, urgency. Let's get it done. Well, the 49ers didn't get it done. And then the receiver market exploded. Just exploded. Nico Collins, $24 million a year, May 12th. You had April 24th when Amaran St. Brown got his $30 million a year with a big fat signing bonus. Justin Jefferson, June 3rd, got his $35 million a year. Jalen Waddle signed on May 30th. Devontae Smith signed on April 15th. A.J. Brown signed on April 30th. And, of course, Devontae Smith was at $25 million a year. A.J. Brown at $32 million a year. You had Jalen Waddle at $28.5 million per year. And I think a lot of people say, boy, 
I'd rather have Brendan Ayuk than Jalen Waddle. Ayuk is consistent. So the 49ers philosophy, everybody says, you know, this isn't their way of doing business. They wait till training camp to negotiate with you. Well, we may need to rethink that. They they kind of got burned this time, Bontan. As you're reading off those dates there, and you know, you look at what you know the Niners could have possibly given Brandon Ayuk. I think they had a a kind of a, a really good window there from April 15th tax day when Devontae Smith signed that deal that was yep. going to pay him about 25 million a year, and then it was nine days later on the 24th yep. Yep. when. You know, Amon Ross St. Brown signed his deal for thirty million, and and that's what Mike Silver, you know, cites in this article that, you know, he basically kind of says that, you know, the 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 Niners they came back and got the Lions in the NFC title game, but the Lions they kind of turned things around on the Niners, and and in a sense they kind of tagged them back here a little bit by giving Amon Ra that deal. I think if if you're John Lynch, I have to think that when he saw that news broke, like he had some sort of like you know heart sink or you know like feeling right. in his gut like oh well, no that is not what I wanted to see happen because what that Almond Rod deal did was basically I think kind of I want to say lock it in but I think it got Brandon Ayuk mm-hmm. in the mode of thinking well if that dude's get who if that dude who my team beat in the NFC title game right. is getting thirty million right you know I'm out here making ladybug catches going to the Super Bowl <laughs> I, I, I probably need to be a little bit more than thirty million because. You know, or, or, and just, I, or just more to Devontae, 25. You mm-hmm. know, or Jalen Waddle at the 28 and a half. He said, hey, that's my baseline right there. But if you if the Niners would have done business earlier because the reports are they haven't negotiated really with Ike since May up until training camp. Obviously, they're going back and forth with the agents and whatnot. But if they got it done, he may have gotten 23, 24, 25. And then all of a sudden, again, Fat Joe, yesterday's price is not today's price. The goalposts move. <laughs> all of a sudden, they get shifted because... Devontae and Waddle and uh, Nico Collins, I'm right. They're all getting paid. They're all getting this big time, big, big time deals. And now you can like, hold up, wait a minute. Now the ball's in my court. So look, we can argue about leverage and who has leverage and who doesn't have leverage or whatnot. But the fact is, the 49ers may have shot them in the foot, shot themselves in the foot with the philosophy they have in terms of getting deals done. Now Michael Silver in the Chronicle wrote Loving about the Lions and how. Indirectly, they may have affected the 49ers. Brad Holmes, the GM of the Detroit Lions, has done a great job alongside Dan Kebble, the head coach of the Lions. Brad Holmes spent half a billion dollars this offseason. Half a billion dollars. Big time extensions for Jared Goff. Big time extensions for Taylor Decker. Big time extensions for Panay Sewell. Big time extensions for Amaran St. Brown. And so when you think about what they did, the massive deals they got done back in April, and then later on in the offseason, made things a bit more complicated for his 49ers counterpart, John Lynch. So that it, look, Amaran Shea Brown gets $77 million guaranteed. Penay Sewell becomes one of the highest paid left tackles in football. Now he's second because Tristan Wirth signed his deal yesterday. He's getting $28.1 per year. Penay Sewell's getting $28 million per year, but he's got the $85 million guaranteed. But he, Brad Holmes decided, you know what, I need to take care of my own right away. Before everything starts happening with Tristan Wirfs and all the market and, you know, Darius Shaw in Minnesota, he took care of his guys early. And I just wonder if the 49ers had to do it all over again, would they have gotten this deal done early instead of now it's lingering? Now it's lingering. Now the fans are thinking, man, what the hell's going on with Brendan Ayuk number 11? Are we really going to count on Ricky Purcell, our rookie wide receiver? Are we going to count on him to stay healthy? Juwan Jennings obviously is ascending here with the 49ers, but also Trent Williams. You don't have big Trent Williams, and boy, it's going to be a struggle offensively. He makes this thing go, whether it's Christian McCaffrey in the run game, whether it's Brock Purdy in the pass game. You need big Trent. So not getting this, not getting these deals done early and you're messing around, messing around, going back and forth, it may have shot the Niners in the foot. But and it may come you to do the legal. <laughs> all right, Fomo. Uh, and, 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 you know, now all of a sudden you may have to give these guys more money. More money and it impact your cap. All right, you're listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMC FM, and AC1 San Francisco and Odyssey Sports Station, always live on the free Odyssey app. I wonder if Parag Barate Lubman and the Roasters out there, 888-957-9570, should the Niners shift their philosophy and how they do business with free agents or guys looking for new deals? Yeah, I mean, I think of, you know, I remember Matt Barrows, he cited Moneyball yesterday, so I'm going to cite Moneyball too. Um, and that's going to be the Billy Bean line, adapt or die. Uh, and the Niners, they kind of got bit there by by their philosophy of waiting. And that I agree with you, Bonte. They are going to have to change things because 
it's not just the Brandon Ayuk deal. It's the Brock Purdy situation. Obviously, they can't sign, you know, Brock Purdy, he can't sign his mm-hmm. deal till next year. So it's a little bit different. But, you know, Jared Goff, Jordan Love, uh, Tua Tagovailoa, they have jacked up the price on Brock Purdy to where it, Jed didn't need to say it. He was going to be getting a reset the market deal. Of course, when Jed says it, though, it, it makes it, yeah. you know, more more real every time you see one of these quarterbacks sign their own reset the market deal. And then again, you know, they, they waited on Trent. And that's the interesting thing is I think Barrow said yesterday that, you know, the Niners knew this was coming down the pipe with Trent Williams. Um, but then they still sit back and yep. they let, you know, Sewell and Worth, you know, reset the market on them. And so it's it's like I don't want to say the Niners were asleep at the wheel here, but it gives the impression of a team that was kind of asleep at the wheel here yeah. and letting these deals build up and letting their old players get more and more expensive. Now, when it comes to the Lions, I think the Lions are in a slightly different situation than yeah. the Niners. Cap that, situation, everything. Yeah, well, no not doubt. even just the cap situation. I mean, this is the first time in my lifetime and in a lot of people's lifetimes that the Lions actually had a good season. Yeah. Like, you got to go back to, I think, 1956 was the last time the Lions 57. won. 57. Oh, I was close. NFL title. Yeah, that was the last <laughs> time the Lions won a, po- a yeah. postseason game. So... <laughs> You know, the, the emotions and the stakes are a little bit different in Detroit where it's you had your best team in 60 years. You're going to go, you know, you're going to go pretty hard in locking those guys up because there is an emotional aspect to it right. where this was our first good team in forever. We don't want to see this team go away. It's kind of similar no to, you know, yeah, yeah. I remember when, when the Giants in 2010, when they got good and they started locking guys up, you know, longer maybe than they should because right. there's that emotional feel of just like, you don't want to see those guys leave. Yep. They put good feelings in your heart. They make you feel warm and fuzzy mm-hmm. inside. And that's big because it gets really, really cold in Detroit. So no <laughs> um, I think that's a little bit what's going on there. It's, you know what, is Jared Goff, you know, an elite tier quarterback? Maybe not. But, but for that he, team, he but for that them. team, he works. As Dan Campbell said, you are good enough for us. Yep. And yeah. that team, that city, you know, they have fallen in behind Goff for better or for worse. That's what that deal says there. Amon Ross St. Brown, is he the best receiver in the league? Probably not. Um, is he better than Brandon Ayuk? I'd be curious to see how many people would take Ayuk over Amon Ross St. Brown. I Not a lot of people, especially after the receiver doc. I think a lot of people see the receiver doc and they're like, ooh, ooh, ooh. Puts him in Amon a new Ross light. St. Brown, oh, man, he's a beast. And he is a beast. Well, he is a Ayuk problem. is in that receiver doc with him, though. I mean, well, Ayuk, well, the player spoke on Ayuk. He's 66 on the top 100. Mm-hmm. He was a second-team All-Pro. He's a 91 overall on Madden, whatever that means. He makes the most of his opportunities. Now, Detroit, obviously, they play indoors, and, you know, they got Sam Laporta as well, and they got a lot of talent. And Look, man, they are in a different situation. They're going for it, though. They are identified, like, you know what, let's take care of our young players. What's the 49ers have done? Let's not get it twisted. They took care of Fred Warner. They took care of George Kittle. They took care of Nick Bosa. They took care of Debo Samuel. Mm-hmm. They, took care, they took care of Jimmy Garoppolo. They've been taking they, care of guys for the last five, six Dr- years. Drake this Greenlaw. Was, this was kind of the first year where the Lions have had to take care of their guys. So right. there's not as much, I think, uh, stress on their future cap allocations right now no. as with the Niners. Now, of course, everything I see about the Niners is that they can't afford to pay everybody this year. It's you know the financial crunch that will come next year. And you know maybe we can get into that later because if that's the situation, I... Again, it's not my money, and I'm I'm not like Shasky. I am very pro player. I am very anti team business. <laughs> I want these billionaire owners to spend as much money on this product as possible because it's not yeah. my money; it's your money. Keep spending it. No doubt, um, no doubt. But uh, just to 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 that point too, yeah. though, I don't I don't want to say that the Niners didn't do anything because they did take care of McCaffrey in the off season, which was was like wow. Okay, we all kind of thought that man. What if McCaffrey decided to hold out after the season he had? Well, they took care of him, and it happened very quietly. And when people were like, well, where's McCaffrey at for OTAs? He's getting ready for a wedding. Dude, I got tipped off that, oh, NBC was doing some promo shoots, and McCaffrey showed up. So I was like, oh, we may be getting some news soon. And, of course, the next day, he signs a contract extension. Jawan Jennings signs a tender, right? But are you can Trent? How long will this last? How long will it last? But for some positivity, folks, how about this? Drake Grulaw is going to be out for a while, right? And we talk about Patrick Willis at linebacker. Listen to what Matt Barrels had to say about D winners. This one blew me away. He's fast. I mean, he made a play yesterday in the backfield. I think uh, every longtime 49ers reporter thought the same thing. He wears number 53, and he comes swooping in and makes a big hit uh, on a running back five yards deep in the backfield. And your initial thought was, 
what's Navarro Bowman doing back out there? The, the same number, the same kind of physique, wow. the same kind of flashing into the offensive backfield. Arrow up for him. You know, number number three linebacker doesn't play a lot of snaps, but number three linebacker becomes number two linebacker if there is an injury. Navarro Bowman, D winners. Sounds good to me. That's that's a pretty good guy to get comped to. Matt, so hey, Matt Barrels is just not throwing that out there. He's not that type of dude. No, so, he's a straight shooter on that. So I can't wait to see him in this preseason opener against the Titans. How much better has he gotten? I can't wait to see it. Wow. Navarro Bowman, they thought they saw 53 Navarro Bowman, who's now with the Chargers staff, is going to be in Ohio tomorrow, Kent, in Ohio, seeing his boy Patrick Willis get his gold jacket. Navarro Bowman vibes? It's going to be, there's going to be a very big spotlight on D winners now the rest of this uh, preseason there's here. No to see. Now, I mean, I, I don't want to put too much, you know, expectations, pressure on winners. Let's, let's see what he does on the no, field. No let's doubt. just not say he's Navarro Bowman. No, we're not saying 0. that. We're not saying that. But if you're, ta- if you're worried about, because we can get into this on the other side here, I know we're up against it, but. One of my big concerns with the Niners' defense was in the draft, they really didn't address the absence of of Dre Greenlaw. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought they would, you know, reach a little bit higher for a linebacker to try and replace him there because it's not just when Greenlaw will come back, it's right. what kind of Dre Greenlaw will you be getting when he does come back. But if the reason they didn't do that is because they got, you know, D winners out here doing Navarro Bowman impersonations, all right, that makes a little bit more sense. No, that does, that does. And they believe in their player development. Development, excuse me. The Niners have done very, very well when it comes to developing their own 